Let me tell you, believe me when I say that this has probably been one of the worst weeks in the history of weeks. So first I got COVID and then I was just there laying in my bed, you know, my mind playing the Miraculous Ladybug theme song on repeat as it always does. And then Netflix just releases a third 365 days movie on this week of all weeks? The world on fire as it is and you guys over there are just like, yes, everything is horrible, but what if we made it worse? I'm actually kind of impressed though that they were able to take about 40 minutes of total story and stretch that out into like three two hour movies. I mean, hey, that's a skill that exists. So yeah, as is my cross to bear by no one's fault but my own, I guess I have to check out the third and better freaking be the last one, 365 Days movie called The Next 365 Days, which is about how long it's gonna take the last four brain cells I have left to recover from all this. Now as for last time, there was a shootout between Massimo, Nacho, Massimo's brother, and this lady who decided to wear a full body spandex suit to a gang war. And after this, Massimo's brother and this lady uh, expire, shall we say, and Laura gets caught in the crossfire. So, oh my goodness, first a car accident, now this? Is she gonna be okay? What's gonna happen? Just kidding, she's totally fine laying in bed with a full face of makeup on. Now, due to everything I just said, there's a war brewing between the Sicilian Mafia and the Spanish Mafia. But before that, really quick, this video is sponsored by Audible. If you don't know what Audible is by now, Audible is an online service that lets you download audiobooks, audio newspapers, and just like all kinds of spoken word entertainment. If you sign up now, you can start listening with a free 30-day Audible trial, which gets you one free audiobook that you can use for any title in their premium selection and keep forever. Now, on top of the premium selection, Audible also has thousands and and thousands of all-you-can-listen audiobooks, original entertainment, and podcasts included in the Audible Plus catalog. Audible Plus is their new service that lets you download and stream as much as you want from thousands of titles, including all Audible original content. Now, Audible originals are exactly what they sound like. Audiobooks are some kind of like audio entertainment thing that you can't find anywhere else. Or exclusive versions of books like The Adventures of Tom Sawyer read by Nick Offerman, for example. If you're looking for something to spend your free audiobook credit on, I would recommend the new Janet McCurdy book, I'm Glad My Mom Died. I mean, it is a mess up roller coaster of a story, but if you're at all interested in what it's like being a child star or the show iCarly or just like behind the scenes of what a tween teen show is like, this is a heck of a listen, I'll tell you that. Sign up with my link, audible.com slash Alex Myers, or text my name Alex Myers to 500, 500 start your Audible Plus membership, and start streaming thousands of audiobooks today. Okay, back to the show. The war between our families will be bloody. Lots of bad things have happened. Yeah, like we got three of these movies and six after movies. Who's got the monkey's paw right now? Come on, I just want to talk. Look, I'll tell you one time. This is Sicily. It's my territory. You will never step a foot in here again. Forget that video. But this. Take your dog and live. Anyway, so like I said, Laura's totally fine despite everything that just happened, which is how these movies always seem to resolve their cliffhangers, I guess. Oh my goodness, a rival mafia gang has run her car off the road? What's gonna happen next time? Ah, just kidding, she's in her house making waffles, you bunch of sillies. Okay, so last time I put it on three and they came out still frozen, so I'm gonna move it over to four and see what happens. What the fuck? But yeah, so like every time there's a cliffhanger in these movies, like it never gets resolved because nothing actually matters. And someone somewhere watches this and they're like, these movies just really speak to me, you know? But yeah, so Laura's life has pretty much just kind of gone back to normal. That's all. Yes. Anyway, so as per usual, she hangs out with her friend Olga a bunch and does a whole lot of nothing in particular over the course of like 10 montages. But one day, just when everything seems fine and normal, you'll never guess what happens. Hello? Hi. Missing me. Well, if it isn't Mr. Crunchwrap Supreme himself. Well, I was wondering when you were going to show up again. Where did you get my number? You know, I am who I am. So, how are you? Why are you calling? Because I can't forget about you. So try harder. That's right, so Nacho calls and she just shuts him down right there. Never thinks about him again. Problem solved. Movie's over, everybody. Olo, czasem prawda nie jest prosta. Co się wydarzyło na tej wyspie? On był po prostu inny. Kto? 
Ah, uh, did you and I watch the same movie? Because like you running away with him was a secret plot by his family to trick you and get at Massimo. Like literally everything that happened was orchestrated. Your world didn't fall apart. You were just bamboozled by this dude. But hey, whatever. Anyway, so now you're not going to believe this. Okay, but sit down, get your favorite Curious George book out. I like the one where he goes up in the hot air balloon. And put your socks on real snug, okay? Because I'm about to blow them off. But ever since that savory Dorito hard chill himself called her up, suddenly he's all she can think about. And this goes on for the next 40 minutes of the movie, okay? It's just her thinking about Nacho, and then Massimo's over here getting all grumpy because she's clearly got something on her mind, but then he's like, what's on your mind, Laura? And then she's like, jeez, Massimo, what's with the fifth degree here? Didn't realize I was being interrogated by the CIA. What, you saying you don't trust me anymore? I'm not defensive, you're defensive. Shut up, this family stinks. No one understands me. And so, because Laura is so obsessed with Nacho now, over the next eight montages, her marriage falls apart, and instead of actually dealing with the issue like an adult, she just kind of heads off with Olga to do a whole lot of whatever this is. Idzie z jakąś laską, co? Z jaką laską? No, ładna, długie nogi, blondyna. Całkiem niezła dupa z niej. To jego siostra Amelia. Siostra? Co ty kurwa siostrę znasz? Może matkę i babkę też? Przestań. Yeah, I don't know if that's supposed to be reassuring or anything, because like I saw them in the last movie and they were a little too touchy feely for me. You know what I'm saying? Teraz, teraz idziesz. tell you. I swear, sums up with this family. But the important thing is that Laura saw him, and now she really can't get him out of her mind and has no idea what to do with all these feelings. You know, I think I probably said this before in a previous video, but like, this type of back and forth, like, oh golly gee, somehow, despite having no personality whatsoever, I have to pick between two super hot guys, but instead of respecting their time, I'm just gonna string them both along until it all blows up in my face around the 45 minute mark. Like, this kind of makes sense in Twilight or whatever, because Bella's like 17, you know? But this lady's like 30. I mean, come on, get your life together. Later on in the movie, there's some kind of fashion show, I think for Laura's fashion business thing or whatever from the second movie, although to be fair, I don't care enough either way. What is important though is that Nacho's sister is there and she has a little something to tell Laura. I'm glad to see you in good shape. I was really worried about you. Yeah, me too. I mean, hey, between working from home, Uber Eats, and Instacart, like I'm amazed I haven't gone full Nikocado Avocado at this point, you know what I'm saying? Laura, you know he's not a bad person, right? He's just... It doesn't just apply the way he treated me. I know, and when I found out what he had done, I didn't talk to him like for a week. I didn't even make out with him for a whole month, so yeah, I think he got the message. Hear him out at least. That's right, turns out Nacho was here the whole time, so Laura decides, hey, why not at least talk to the dude and hang out in the tackiest car she's ever seen? Come on, what's the worst that could happen? How could you do this to me? Everything was so perfect until you showed up. But you know, like, okay, so in the second movie, Laura thinks Massimo cheated on her, and she immediately goes full scorched earth. She throws her phone in the ocean and runs away to a private island villa with the first guy who's nice to her. Now, it turns out this was all a trick, but still, is she not doing the exact same thing right now that she was mad at Massimo for thinking he was doing? Am I crazy? And like, what exactly is she in love with this guy for anyway? I mean, this dude made her pasta like once, and then she was like, well, shoot, you've turned my world upside down. Man, I tell you, I've been doing this whole dating thing completely the wrong way. You give a man a fish, he eats for a day, but give a girl some carbs and she She's yours for life, my dude. Anyway, so Nacho takes her to one of his bajillion houses, I guess. Which, side note, remember back in the first movie when Massimo was living in a literal castle? Whatever happened to that? They got married and now they're just living in some walk-up condo? Like, come on, talk about the old bait and switch, am I right? But anyway, Nacho's house. Make yourself at home. You know, everyone says that, but like no one actually wants that. Please, make yourself at home. My house is your house. Really? Okay, <laughs> you say so. Oh yeah. Oh, that's a good one right there. <laughs> Lunch, what are you doing lining shelves on a Friday night? I'm working off all my excess sexual energy. Why don't we just hook you up to the toaster and make pop tarts? <laughs> 
Oh, trust me, you're gonna want to wait a while. It's like Chernobyl in there. Hmm, come on, gotta get this fart out while she's in the other room, okay? It's gonna be weird if I take too long, so... Hmm, come on, fart, where'd you go? Come. I wanna show you something. And then he just takes her to his private beach with a bunch of pre-lit candles in the sand, like, yeah, okay, dude. <laughs> That's not even, like, who, who, who would even... <laughs> yeah, well, you got weird cheekbones, okay? Shut up. You can't run away from me. But you can't run away from what you feel. How do you know what I feel? Your body is worse light than you are. <laughs> Your body is the worst. The heck does that even mean? Oh, hey, Laura. Nice to see you. How have you been? Oh, you know, I'm fine. Nothing special. All right. I'm so glad you asked. My life is a total mess. How much time do you have? Anyway, so they sit on this lame beach setup. <laughs> okay, whatever. And have a little heart to heart talk. Natural. I need time. I will give you time, little bit. I'll be waiting, even for the rest of my life. <laughs> and as you might imagine, they end up doing the old devil's tango. Which again is exactly the thing that she got mad about back in the second movie. But when she does it, you know, she's all like, yeah, well, I mean, he can make spaghetti, okay? Come on, what was I supposed to do? So now she's crossed that line that she can never go back from, and she doesn't know what to do. So she goes to talk to her mom for a while about, like, boys and stuff, and then her mom's like, I don't know, do it, you're like 30, do whatever you want. But then that night, Laura has a dream that involves both Nacho and Massimo, and obviously I can't show this to you, but, like, believe me when I say that, now, wherever you think this dream is going, it goes somewhere very different. Now, short story even shorter, we find out later that at some point, conveniently off screen, Massimo found out that Laura and Nacho did the old devil's tango. And would you believe, he might be a little perturbed. Hello, odbieraj. Spokojnie, no co się dzieje? Co się dzieje? Co się dzieje, kurwa? Co się dzieje, że Massimo o wszystkim wie, Larry? Rozumiesz? On wie o tobie i o Nacho. No, powiedział ci o tym? Nie, nie. Podsłucham, jak rozmawiał z Domenico. So Laura decides it's finally time to come clean to Massimo and be an adult and deal with whatever consequences are waiting for. But not before she gets one more surprise when she arrives in Sicily and gets in the car. Laura, by coming here, I'm risking my life because I needed to see you. I want to be honest with you. I came to like you first for the way you get angry for being so stubborn. <laughs> What? I really like when you get angry and how stubborn you are. <laughs> like, okay, my dude, you are in for a life of misery. I'll tell you that right now. I love looking at you when you sleep, when you brush your teeth and raise one leg. <laughs> what? Excuse me? <laughs> you like when she raises one leg? Was she peeing on a fire hydrant? What's going on in this movie? Nacho. I need more time. I will wait. Yeah, you said that already, right? You were like, I'm in love with you, but I'll wait for you to be ready. I'm just kidding. I'm going to keep showing up and pushing the issue until you give me the answer I want. <laughs> Psych. And so in the end, Laura goes to talk to Massimo about Nacho and her and what this means for their marriage and all that dumb adult stuff that no one ever wants to talk about in these movies. So you knew everything about Nacho for a long time, didn't you? Why didn't you do anything? When I was a child, my dad used to read me a book. I still remember one sentence, a little parable. It said, uh, circle, circle, dot, dot, now you have a cootie shot. That's how I've lived my life ever since. And right then, just when Laura's about to come to a decision about whether to pick Massimo or Nacho or both, uh, the, the movie just ends? <laughs> And that's the whole trilogy, right there. So like, the first movie is about how Massimo kidnaps Laura a la Beauty and the Beast, and then she falls in love with him or whatever. The second movie is about this rival mafia secret conspiracy to like ruin the Massimo family. But then the third movie is just like, golly gee whiz, I'm in love with two guys who half whisper everything they say. What's a girl to do? The stakes are just like so low in this movie, and it doesn't even end? Like what was the point of any of this? All right, ladies, so uh, your choices between a uh, toxic dude with anger issues or a toxic manipulative guy who says whatever you want to hear just to get his own way, so. 
Why do so many women get so jaded from dating? It's certainly one of life's eternal mysteries, I tell you what. But like, real talk though, so back in the first movie, Laura is like literally kidnapped off the street by Massimo, the mafia boss, right? And she's like kind of forced to get with him because like, I mean, he says he would give her 365 days to fall in love with him and then if she doesn't, he would let her go. But like, is she really supposed to believe that? Like, come on, like she sees what this guy does and you know, then she's like, oh, he'll let me go for sure, yeah. But then Nacho comes along and he's all perfect, but turns out he's been lying to her and tricking her the whole time. But he kind of started to develop feelings for her halfway through. So like, uh, I guess she's just supposed to forget the giant disclaimer on their relationship. But like real talk, I think the real moral of the story here is that Laura needs a new group of friends, okay? <laughs> like maybe dating within the same mafia crime circles is not the best way to go about living your life. But like having watched all three, like, okay. So clearly this is supposed to be just like, the European Fifty Shades of Grey. Now I, now, I can't believe I'm about to defend Fifty Shades, but throughout that movie series, they actually tried to kind of dig into Christian Grey and like, why is he the way he is? And why, you know, all of his mommy issues and why does he feel the need to do these things? And that there's at least some kind of, at least a farce of depth you know, like they, they try, they try, they don't succeed, but they try. Like at no point do we ever get to know like, why is Massimo the way he is besides like he's a mafia boss at the end. You know what I mean? Let's like, why does he act this way? Like what what's really going on in his past that made him do this? Or even like Laura, it's like, why is Laura staying with this guy? Besides the obvious, like she was kidnapped thing. But you know, it's like, is there something about her that maybe makes her gravitate towards a toxic relationship? And maybe she overcomes that at some point. Like, I don't know, there's like something they could have done maybe just the tiniest kitty pool of depth, you know? Anyway, thanks for watching, everybody. Hope you enjoyed the video. Um, I did not enjoy the movie, so I hope you enjoyed the video. If you liked it, don't forget to subscribe. Don't forget to ring that bell. Uh, comment down below. Like the video. All that stuff. Send me a message at alexmyerscontact at gmail.com and let me know what movies or TV shows you think I should check out now that I am free from this movie series. And above all, else, everybody have a great day, and I'll see you all next time.